What was the last surviving remnant of the Western Roman Empire? This is a question which at first seems very easy. It seems pretty clear that the realm of Siagrius must have been the last surviving Roman state of the former Western Roman Empire, because Siagrius was the last legitimate Roman ruler in the West and hence with the fall of his domain, so did the last beacon of Rome fall in Europe, this last beacon of light amidst the encroaching darkness of the barbarian kingdoms. Or that is at least the picture that one might get when looking at old maps of Western Europe and when reading the accounts of ancient historians. But we have found that the reality is far more complex than we would like it to be and that we can find some hidden Roman remnant states in places that we wouldn't at first have suspected. The fall of the Roman Empire is possibly the most complex fall of an empire in human history. Seldom did an empire fall so slowly in so many different places over so many different centuries. We found now in countless videos that it is almost impossible to find the last Roman state. In the East, the candidates are of course the fall of Constantinople itself in 1453, but also the empire of Trebizond, the despotate of Epirus or the principality of Theodoro, who still survived some decades longer than Constantinople itself as states of the ancient Roman Empire in the East. In the West, the story is also complicated. The realm of Julius Nepos in Dalmatia survived a few years longer than the Western Roman state and the realm of Suagrius fell 10 years after Odoacer took over power in Italy. But we found in this video here that if we don't strictly only take the last legitimate Roman rulers as a measure, then suddenly it is vastly more complicated to say what the last Western Roman state was. Now suddenly, we could also say that actually the kingdoms of Odoacer and later of Theoderic represented true Roman states, since all administrative and civil offices were left untouched and the language, culture, buildings and infrastructure were left absolutely unchanged from the late decades of the Western Roman Empire, thus there was absolute cultural continuity. We could thus also say that the Western Roman Empire actually fell in the 550s AD with the destruction of the Ostrogothic Kingdom, because it was a true successor of the ancient Roman Empire in the West in all but name. However, we found in this video here that some of the old Berber kingdoms also rightfully deserve to be called Roman and that we could actually even make a case to say that some of those Romano-Berber kingdoms that actually survived until around the year 700 were actually true successor states of the Western Roman Empire, since Roman customs and traditions were carried on long after the fall of the Western Roman Empire. If we thus take the continuity of customs, offices, way of life, language and such as a measure, then suddenly it becomes much more difficult to say what actually the last Western Roman state was. But apart from all these potential Western Roman remnant states, there is another one that might have survived far longer than even the Romano-Berber kingdoms. And we find it in a place where we would have least suspected it, since that part of the Roman Empire in the West was one of the first to be abandoned by Rome, namely in Roman Britain. Britain was abandoned in the year 407 AD entirely by the Romans as a direct result of the invasion of Gallia after December 31st, 406 AD. In that year, the Rhine frontier was breached and even though the Frankish Foederati at first were successful in fending off the invaders, there were just too many and they then overran the border defenses and sacked many cities in Gaul. Stilicho, the protector of the West, was occupied until August of 406 with the defense of Italy and so the troops in Britain rebelled when news of the devastation of Gaul had reached them. Hence, a series of new emperors were proclaimed by the troops and finally in 407 AD, the usurper Constantine III left Britain and took with him all remaining Roman troops and set over to Gaul. Now we might think that this was the end of Roman Britain, but actually the Western Empire never saw it that way. Yes, military control over Britain was indeed given up, but the later Western Roman emperors always still referred to Britain as still belonging to the Roman Empire. And indeed, archaeological evidence shows that until the 450s AD, Roman life continued quite unchanged in Britannia. Rich landowners lived in their luxurious land estates as if nothing happened. 
Roman life continued quite unchanged for a few more decades after the Roman army had left. It was only after the 450s that the Anglo-Saxon invasions would start in earnest and that the romano brightons would now have to fortify themselves in the old Roman forts and that many Roman settlements and the large land estates were given up and started to fall into ruin. I made a video about the state of the city of London some decades after the withdrawal of Roman troops. And if you are a Rome nerd like me, then you will certainly love the wonderfully detailed handcrafted rings and other Roman accessories by the SPQR shop. These guys make really amazing items, carefully handcrafted, and you will certainly find something in their shop, link in the description. And they even make the one and only official Majorianus channel ring, which you can order in bronze and even silver to honor the legacy of the Emperor Majorian. I like to think that Majorian would be proud if he could see that. With the code Majorianus, you even get a 10% rebate on every one of their items. So go and check out their amazing shop. And you can now even order Majorianus merch. Yes, indeed. Mugs or t-shirts on my official merch page, to which I of course also link in the description. Julius Valerius Majorianus would be quite surprised to see all this merch. And Rikima would be super jealous because he does not get a single item. Quite amazing stuff, so go and check it out. Interestingly now, in the west of Britain, in modern Wales, the Romans had withdrawn some 20 years before Constantine III's usurpation. In those years, Magnus Maximus had proclaimed himself new emperor of the Romans and had taken with him a large part of the military forces in what is today Wales. In those days, that region had become Romanized over the course of 300 years of Roman occupation. After the withdrawal of Roman troops, this area was left to defend itself. It was in 383 AD that Magnus Maximus had left the island. But in those years, there came someone to Wales called in the Historia Britonum Padarn Beisrut ab Tegid, which can be translated as Paternus of the Scarlet Robe, son of Tegid. Scarlet Robe indicates a high Roman military rank, so he might have been an officer in the Roman army stationed in the north of Britain by Magnus Maximus himself. Or he might have been a Germanic chieftain who was granted a Roman military rank, thus having been made Foederati of the Empire. Whatever the case is, he most likely fought for the Western Roman Empire and was part of its legions. After the withdrawal of Maximus and his troops, Padarn's command in northern Britain near Hadrian's Wall lasted for some more decades and was then continued by his son Edern, which is derived from Roman Aeternus. Edern had a son named Cuneda in the Historia Britonum, who still defended the area south of Hadrian's Wall against invasions of the Picts in the late 300s or early 400s AD. In Wales, meanwhile, the complete withdrawal of all Roman troops had left it defenseless against raids by marauders from Ireland and the Isle of Man. For reasons not entirely clear, Cuneda, his sons and their entire entourage moved to northern Wales, where they fought these marauders and brought the area back under Romano-British control. Or, alternatively, which is not entirely clear, they could have actually just been opportunists themselves who wanted to take control of this undefended area. So Cuneda, son of Edern, son of Padarn, established a domain there and became the first ruler of this Roman-British kingdom, which came to be known as the Kingdom of Gwynedd. It is very likely though that this area was called entirely differently back then, most likely still with its Roman name of Venedotia or Norvalia. The name Gwynedd itself comes from Irish and hence probably developed with time after that realm was established. Cuneda reigned for a long time, until around 440 AD and died as late as 460. The official written language of this realm was Latin and Cuneda saw himself as a legitimate successor of Magnus Maximus. In fact, even the later kings of Gwynedd referred to themselves as successors of Magnus Maximus. For instance, the pillar of Elisek near the town of Langollen in Wales was erected around the year 855 AD by King Singen ab Cadil. Fascinatingly, it lists Magnus Maximus as the ancestor of that king. So later kings traced their lineage back to Magnus Maximus himself in order to legitimize themselves as true Romano-Brightons 
and they actually viewed themselves as descendants of the Romans. The inhabitants of Gwynedd continued to have an affinity with Rome long after the collapse of the Western Roman Empire, especially because Latin was continued in writing and the Christian religion was continuously practiced. The ruling classes continued to emphasize Roman ancestors as a way to link their rule with the old imperial Roman order. According to some scholars, such as John Davies, there is a determinedly Brythonic and indeed even Roman heir to early Gwynedd. And the Roman heritage was so strong that Brian Ward Perkins, a scholar whom I respect very much, wrote, quote, It took until 1282 when Edward I conquered Gwynedd for the last part of Roman Britain to fall and a strong case can be made for Gwynedd as the very last part of the entire Roman Empire, East and West, to fall to the barbarians." End quote. This is truly fascinating. So what then? Can we imagine the Kingdom of Gwynedd as a beacon of Roman civilization in the West, when all the rest fell into the Dark Ages? Can we imagine the cities of Gwynedd as Roman cities with impressive monuments and statues and grand fora, as in the old days? Can we imagine Roman soldiers wearing the old armors and banners of the Limitanae and Comitatenses hundreds of years after the Western Roman Empire had fallen? Can we imagine Roman basilicas, maybe even old temples, upholding the ancient Roman civilization in a sea of darkness? This certainly makes for a very romantic vision and possibly for a nice exaggerated fantasy novel, but of course we know that nothing could be further from the truth. In reality, there was a quick abandonment of Roman political, social, ecclesiastical practices and institutions after the Romans withdrew from Wales under Magnus Maximus, within the area of Gwynedd and also elsewhere in Wales. Roman knowledge was lost as the Romano Britons shifted towards a streamlined, militaristic, near tribal society that no longer included the use of coinage and other complex industries dependent on a monetary economy. Architectural techniques using brick and mortar and even more basic knowledge such as the use of the wheel in pottery production were entirely forgotten. The buildings were primitive compared to the old impressive Roman stone buildings and most people lived in primitive round houses like in the pre-Roman times. Brian Ward Perkins suggests that the Welsh had to abandon the old Roman ways that proved insufficient or indeed superfluous to meet the challenge of survival they faced. In Perkins' own words, quote, militarized tribal societies, despite their political fragmentation and internal strife, seem to have offered better protection against Germanic invasion than exclusive dependence on a professional Roman army that in the troubled years of the 5th century was all too prone to melt away or mutiny." End quote. So basically what Perkins says is that the Welsh returned to a more primitive lifestyle as would have been found in pre-Roman Britain. Yes, they did continue the Roman language and religion, but their cities and dwellings would not have appeared Roman at all, nor would their attire or military armor. But then again, the Eastern Romans at the time of the fall of Constantinople did also not look like the early Romans anymore, but they still called themselves Romans. The Welsh who lived in the Kingdom of Gwynedd also saw themselves as successors of the Romans, tracing their ancestors back to Magnus Maximus himself and hence who are we to say that they were less Roman than the Byzantines? They did use Latin and continued some Roman traditions and hence they are a fascinating successor state of the Western Roman Empire that upheld a Roman heritage far longer than any other state in the West. In 1282, this kingdom was then finally conquered by the Kingdom of England and even though the romantic fantasy version of the last Romans fighting against the English is certainly very exaggerated, we still might say that with the fall of the Kingdom of Gwynedd, a fascinating Romano-British successor state finally fell and was incorporated into the English Kingdom. We thus see how complex and fascinating the fall of the Western Roman Empire in reality truly is, a fall that took many centuries and is not as easy and clear as we sometimes would like it to be. 
And please like and subscribe so that you won't miss any future videos on the fascinating era of the late Roman Empire. And please consider supporting my work on Patreon or via a YouTube membership because the long term sustainability of this channel really depends on your support. This channel would not work without our amazing Patreon and YouTube members and I want to thank each and everyone who is supporting this channel in any form. Gratias tibiago amiki. And if you want to learn more about the other Western Roman remnant states of Julius Nepos in Dalmatia or of Suagrius, you can watch this video in the upper right corner. But if you are more interested in learning about another fascinating successor state of the Western Roman Empire in Northern Africa, you can watch the other video in the lower right corner. I say thanks again to all friends of Roman history, gratias Tibiago and bene valete.